Good morning. Well, uh, this morning I'm planning on heading up to a hill with no name up by the Paula Indian Reservation. Um, it's up here on the chart. Uh, you probably can't see it. Uh, there's two ways to get up there. There's one uh, from Paula Road, which is really steep in the first section. Um, and, uh, you know, totally doable. There's a trail. The one thing I did, it hasn't uh, been maintained at all. It used to be an old access road is what it looks like. Um, so there are some areas that are really uh, just completely filled up with tumbleweeds and everything else made it kind of difficult uh, on top of the early steepness. Probably for about a mile, it's pretty darn steep, but doable. I didn't enjoy the first part that much, but I want to get up on top. It's nice. The other way is to kind of come in from the north. Um, there's an access road there. It's not heavily traveled. Uh, in fact, I've never seen anybody up there when I've been hiking it. Uh, you're just walking up a road. It's uh, I think that route only has um, about a 364 foot gain as compared to the other route, which is uh, 1,300 feet. So it all depends on what you want to go after. Um, I think I'll do the easier way this morning. Um, so I'm going to head up there. The public uh, health officials are probably asked that all of the really popular parks, uh, park and rec places especially, have been shut down uh, due, due to COVID-19. Um, my guess is the intent is to reduce the probability of clumping, and that means all of the really popular uh, places like Iron Mountain are closed, Cowles Mountain, some of the places around San Diego. This is a little bit more remote, uh, not that well known at all. Uh, probably the only people I know about are the folks that live in that general area. Um, the other intent probably is to, to shut down anything that has um, public facilities uh, that would be reused, picnic tables, that sort of thing. This has none of those. It's not very well known. So I'll head on up there. Um, I doubt it's closed. There's a place near me that's not closed. It's just a, a backcountry trail that's not heavily uh, traveled at all. It's called Black Mountain. There's a couple of Black Mountains actually in town uh, or in the, in the area. So. I'm going to head up this morning. Um, if for some reason that's closed, I have a backup plan that's uh, over in San Marcos uh, that is, well, I, I've never seen anybody up there ever. So um, it is an old mountain bike trail. Uh, so it may be in somewhat use, but people really need to get outside. And I, I think the intent is um, to keep people from clumping and using public or, or, or shared facilities. So there you have it. So let's get cracking. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. at the more or less trailhead. Um, the road is an access road for the aqueduct. There's uh, several like inspection stations and it looks like a pumping station up there. I'm parked right in front of a pumping station right here. And uh, see kind of equipment all the way along the road. It's, it's a beautiful day with a light breeze. Um, on the way up here, it's mainly farms. Uh, farming areas and stuff. There's a fruit, a bunch of fruit trees down there. Um, 
And then over here looks like some they were growing some trees, not sure what they are, but uh, really pretty, quiet, peaceful area. So I'm going to quarantine out here for a while. Brought a sandwich and uh, just hike up the road here. So let's get cracking. Here's the gate for the Actus Road. So it's going to be a nice little, nice little walk up here. A ton of rabbits. It's green. It's been uh, raining up here. So very green. Been raining all around San Diego actually. So uh, we're about to move into a lot less rain during the season. But uh, just beautiful today. Starting to get some views here. Um, another interesting point is Right over here is Montserrat, I'm pretty sure. That's where I was last weekend. Um, I see a trail coming up from this side. So next year, I might try to zero in on that and uh, do a double. I mean, it's, I could certainly just drive down and, and uh, come over here, which actually might be the best thing to do. Because once I'm over here, getting back to the car would be kind of a pain if I was parked over there. But, uh, I think I mentioned last weekend, I did not get up early enough to do both and get some other stuff done. So, looks like a lot of tracks up here. Looks like, uh, possibly deer tracks. Because I'd never make a good hunter, because I'm not sure what these are. Oop, bunny. <laughs> Big guy, too. Maybe it's coyotes that are hunting rabbits. <laughs> Very likely. All right. Some nice uh, views now into the valley. Really pretty. I can see all the way out to the ocean. A little um, bit of moisture out there, so uh, marine layers sitting out there. Um, as I'd mentioned, this is an access road for the aqueduct stuff up here. And uh, this is the very first time I've seen any tire tracks. So I don't think this road's been used in a very long time. I just saw some quail run across the road up there. This is one of the first of many uh, vents slash aqua uh, access points for the aqueduct underneath. Uh, so, doesn't sound, don't really hear it right now. Here's for the comedic section of the hike. Um, I stopped, looked around. <laughs> That's weird. Um, the mountain I'm heading to is right there. So, which was behind me. <laughs> so, yet again, I managed to miss the little <laughs> turn off. Look, if I didn't have GPS, <laughs> you just wouldn't ever hear from me again. It's ridiculous. <sighs> I guess I was just enjoying the walk too much. Anyway, we're going to head back this way. Uh, hold on. Maybe half mile. Alrighty, update. I was only a couple tenths off. <laughs> I'm standing in front of one of those uh, vent access ports to the uh, to the aqueduct. This one's a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can hear it. Sounds like a waterfall. Pretty cool. Um, but anyway, let's head up the road here. Um, we're going to go up here and take the right. It gets kind of steep and and uh, difficult right after. Not difficult, but steeper than just walking on a road. 
as you can see there's another vent up here and we take a right right at that little dude the only part we just made that little turn this is the only part where you can trekking poles is nice but uh, not really necessary a nice continual uphill get your exercise for the day quite nice where we came from this is where we're going to um, up yonder that's a 30 plus degree I think um, one place where hiking poles are definitely going to come in handy especially on the way down when you get a backpack on ah, so nice up here just got a phone with my son who's doing great and it always makes me happy to talk to you one just gotta tell you that buddy all right off we go let's get her done We're in the activation zone. Um, a little plateau here goes up about 10 feet at most, probably not even that. And another little area. So a ton of room to operate. Uh, if you're up here with somebody else running radio, pretty easy to spread out uh, and have fun. Oh my goodness. And look at that view. Give you a quick panorama. Little holding ponds down there. And then up this direction. You can see Mons right over there. I actually think it's, I don't know whether it's one on the left or the right. I think it's one on the left there um, of these two peaks. And then coming around a little valley down there, a lot of agriculture. So I'm gonna set up my little camp chair here and commence to operating. See what we can get today. Okay, the antenna's set up. Lean a little bit, but it should be fine. Um, could always throw another rope on there, but yeah, I might do that. Well, I'm coming down here over to my operating position. I brought this uh, Helinox camp chair, it's super lightweight. It's like friggin' two ounces or something. And uh, it's made for dummies like me. This side up reminds me of the Claymore mines that say this side toward enemy. Because <laughs> you don't want to get that wrong. Anyway, uh, this uh, no problemo here. So with this fella here, get comfortable and uh, fire up the radio. So uh, let's get cracking. So there's a contest that's still going on. Check this out. So let's just see if we can get one. Hit the antenna tuner. Tunes up one to one on 14 megahertz, 20 meter. November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Number one, Charlie Lima, Charlie, summits on the air. So I'm pushing a whole 12 watts. These guys are using a thousand watts in some places. It's gonna be hard to break into some of these. I've done it before, but uh, let's give it a try. We'll try with this guy a little bit. November one, Charlie Lima, Charlie, mountaintop portable. Is 
Is this frequency in use? 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 November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. CQ, 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 November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie calling CQ, CQ, CQ. Whiskey, whiskey, seven, Delta. Got you five nine up here on the mountaintop. Good morning. Uh, thanks. I didn't quite catch that. There was a QRM, but you have a good signal here, Christian. You're about a five by five near Seattle, Washington. Okay. Yeah, Roger, Roger, man. Thanks a lot. I just thought I'd try sideband today. What the heck? Alrighty, man. Thanks for uh, helping me activate this morning. This is November 1. Charlie Lima, Charlie, for Summits on the Air. Any station, anywhere. Whiskey Uniform uh, 7 Hotel, QSL. Hey, Chris. Yeah, I can hear you in there. You're about a 5-5 with a lot of QRM. Yeah, roger, roger. I thought I'd give Sideband a chance today. Uh, what the heck? Seems to be working for a couple of you guys anyway. All right, 73, good luck up there. All righty, 73, this is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie Summits on the air. Okay, I got a summit to summit, summit to summit, summit to summit, go ahead. Okay, uh, summit to summit, summit to stomach, stand by. Um, you're going to need to repeat your call multiple times. Repeat multiple times, over. <laughs> summit to summit, summit to summit, summit to summit, go ahead. Kilowatt zero X ray, go ahead. Roger, Roger, uh, this is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie uh, Summit's on there, your call sign again. This is going to be impossible. Okay, this is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. This is not going to be work. This is not going to work. QSYCW. 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 <clears throat> I think trying to use sideband today was complete fantasy. Um, I wanted to do it just for the guys out there that do only sideband and see if I couldn't help them out, get an activation, do some summit to summit, but it's not going to work today because of the contest. So, um, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to tear up some uh, CW here, see how badly I can uh, murder it.
There's Martha. There's Gary and Martha. Killing it as always. You guys just rock. Okay, um, switched over to 40, got a bunch of contacts here on 20, uh, including ZL1BYZ in New Zealand, so that rocks as always. Going to see if I can get a 7 to 7 here with uh, Kilo Echo 5 Alpha Kilo Lima. It's coming in really nicely here, so, um, and let's see, he's on Summit Whiskey 5 November, Sierra India 010, um, Palomas Peak. And let me see if I can figure out where that is. Um, da, 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 da. Get some more info here. Anyway. Uh, oh, New Mexico. That's sweet. Okay. So, see if I can get a hold of him. Here on 40, he's bouncing in nicely. My CW sucks as usual, but <laughs> that was so hilarious, man. I was trying to send a D at the end of a call sign, and it kept kept coming out as B. And you know, after a little bit of cussing and swearing at the CW gods, they smiled upon me and allowed me to send a D. Gotta love it. Nailed it! Nailed it! Thanks, Michael. Um, hopefully you see you dropped out there. You're coming in now, but uh, a little sketch there. That's awesome, though. Uh, w0, he's uh, uh, KE5 AKL at Whiskey 5 November SI. Whiskey 5 November, Whiskey 5 November, slash SI, uh, dash 010, zero zero, if I remember correctly. Uh, da, 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 da. SI 10, yep. So let's go after uh, KT0 Alpha. Actually, I think he already got me. Let's take a look. He's up on an eight-pointer up on, uh, where the hell is he? He's at um, Whiskey Zero Delta Bravo Bravo Zero Tree 7 in the Dakota. So he's up on 40 right now. Let's see if we can capture him, get an RF lock on him. KT0A. I might already have him in the log, though. Yep, he chased me already. Up on 20. 
You guys rock. Thanks, man. Make sure I got a summit the summit down there. Yep, got a summit. Sweet. Let's see who else is out there. Uh, K5DEZ. Uh, he signed off. K4 Alpha Alpha Echo. He's on 18153. Let's see if we can get him. Eighteen. Oh. You know, sending Morse code is a lot of work. Makes me hungry. That used to be a full sandwich. Um. Honestly, I don't normally bring a sandwich, but. I'm really glad I did. In the last couple of activations, I got really hungry and tempted to stop somewhere, and which is inadvisable. So this time, that problem in the bud made me a big sandwich and uh, enjoy that. Maybe do a little chase in here. Well, k 20 a I hear is tearing it up. So we're gonna jump over there and see if we can catch him. Oh yeah. All right, that wraps it up for the RF portion of this. Um, I was able to summit the summit with Amy. That was awesome because I got to try the KX2's filters uh, and really use them this time. So certainly I did a little bit of fumbling around to try to understand how they work, which which dials did what because they pack everything that you would have in a high-end rig into this little tiny radio so every knob and switch and has like three different functions but i got it working it was totally awesome uh, once i figured it out narrowed the band up a little bit moved around and was able to get an rf lock on her which i could not hear her before the band may have improved a little bit but um yeah i'll take it so that was fun all right, let's get down off the mountain. This is the first time in a while I haven't really been hungry as I head down. I do need to go up and just double check that I haven't left stuff laying on the ground. No trash, certainly. But more importantly, uh, venting various gear out of my bag. I'm really good at that. Stuff popping out and laying on the ground. And, uh, I opened the pouch that held the GoPro batteries because it ran out as you notice part way through my kisos. It's one of the reasons why I cut this short. The other reason is it takes so long to get all those edited in. So um, there you go. Beautiful view. A little bit of marine layer moving in. And uh, got some birds out here hunting off this peak. I get They get some nice thermals and updrafts. Uh, as the wind hits the peak. Um, yeah, a little hazy out there to the coast, giving the moisture in the air. Not too much pollution since uh, nobody's on the roads. So, um, easy trek back. Um, as long, you know, I can't screw this up because I, there's no, there's no turnoff to go by. So, gotta love it. Thank you, chasers. Here's a list of everybody that chased me as part of the credits. I do appreciate it, and I had a blast up here. You guys are awesome! Hey, before I roll the credits, don't forget to check out my channel. In there is a series called Soda360. Right now it's a four-parter, and it shows the beginning, all the plan and preparation that I put into my Soda Expeditions as well as what I carry. And then uh, moving on to do an actual activation, uh, what I call my reference activation. And then at the end, I just show uh, kind of the wrap up, uh, entering all the uh, my logs basically into uh, soda data to get my points. So if you wanna learn how to do soda, uh, that might be a really good reference for you. If you're already doing it, you probably waste your time. See you guys.